There are plenty of surprises on an open country hunt like that. And my surprise, it ended with a nice big white tail. We've got another surprise. Join us on our next episode where our North American hunter contest winner gets to go to Newfoundland for caribou. It's a hunt worth watching. I am Hunter. During deer season, I travel the entire spectrum of deer country, mule deer and white tail. And I kind of like to travel with my truck. That way I can take all my gear with me. Because the airlines, they kind of frown upon that, not to mention they charge you for it. So when I'm leaving my Wyoming base, inevitably, I gotta cross through nearby states like, well, South Dakota. So when I'm crossing through South Dakota, I always figure out, why not hunt South Dakota? And when I hunt South Dakota, I like to team up with my good friend, Levi Duncan. Now Levi, he wears a couple of different hats. He works for the state of South Dakota and he does some ranching. It's that ranching connection though that I really appreciate. He knows a lot of the local landowners around. He gets out and sees the country and he knows where those big bucks are hiding. And not only that, I just enjoy hunting with Levi. He's got a lot of enthusiasm and we like to share tactics. Sometimes he sees a different way to go into a deer and I see another. When we combine the two, we always come up with a successful strategy. So these white tails, to me it seems like, are moving up into these fields because they've got this jungle they usually don't have. Correct. So what you need if you're hunting this year or any year is to be ready with a backup plan. You're not always gonna have your tree stand working for you or your little wood lot sucking all the deer in because these crops could suck all the deer right out of your best spot. So what's our backup here, Levi? I think we're just gonna have to uh, just comb the edge of them, hopefully, and catch one coming out during the run, following a door or two out. I just said the same thing, but I just wanna make sure you know he gets a little notoriety in this whole thing. But the real problem we're gonna have right now is all the cattle are going to try and sneak around, get down to this next hill. There's a waterway there, another drainage ditch, and that should be where the deer are moving at, so. Yeah. All right, let's give that a try. Now, our first morning out, we were going to try and set up in between that hay field and a creek bottom. We're gonna watch the creek bottom first and then move to the hay field as shooting light came upon us. But some of the local uh, livestock had a different idea in mind. You know, you try to manage every aspect of a deer hunt. Manage your land, you sneak in early, try to get to a good vantage point. There's one thing you can't manage and that's cattle. This morning, we got just, well, royally screwed by several hundred head of cows and calves that wanted to follow us around. They followed us all the way from our truck to our hunting spot. And they pretty much got the deer on the spook. Things have settled down a little bit now. We're hoping the cows go away, the whitetails come in. These ranchers, because of the flooding, the high grass numbers, they're rotating their, their, their cattle a lot more than normal years. And uh, because of the weather, they were getting their calves out later. So there's a lot more cattle and horses basically in our hunting area, and it really changes it up. They're real inquisitive when you're walking in, and they can ruin a hunt in short order, but they just try to work around it, and hopefully it works in their advantage. We set up. We started watching, we did not see what we wanted. 
And eventually, the cows, they grew tired of us and moved off, so we moved as well. We headed up to that hay field, we circumnavigated it, and looked into the coolies and draws around it. Unfortunately, no deer were moving. At least nothing that grabbed our attention or any big numbers. Where were they? Well, they either beat us out of those areas or they were staying in those standing crops. Well, let's make a move. Okay, let's Grab get the packs, packs and, and head out. We can do her. North American Hunter is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Ruger, rugged, reliable firearms. M&P, advanced by design. Can-Am off-road vehicles. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Matthews, catch us if you can. Uh, this year we're running into a few uh, more challenges we don't really have to deal with in central South Dakota. Uh, the weather has um, came later than, than normal. We've had a lot of flooding, um, kind of late summer storms, filled up a lot of our hunting area, um, pushed the deer out of certain areas, uh, moved them off property back onto property. Um, so it's going to put a lot more challenges back on us, how to access to get back to the deer, how to retrieve deer, and just figure out different routes that we're not used to hunting by this time of year. Also the Basically, the wet weather has um, delayed the harvest quite a bit, so we'll be also trying to work out that challenge with the standing crops. The next morning, with no pattern at all to grab onto except that hay field, well, we abandoned the hay field. We headed to another big creek bottom over near where Levi's father ranched, and we set up there high to watch it. And right away, a shooting light came up, there we saw a deer a whole herd of them. We put the binoculars on them, and I even got my spotting scope out. And my optics revealed one thing. It wasn't what we were looking for. It was mule deer. Now, I'm not opposed to shooting a big old mule deer buck, but on this hunt, we were targeting whitetails. This group didn't have a mature buck in its midst anyway. So, after a long, bone-chilling sit, we packed up decided we'd better make one more move. Keep trolling like the Missouri River walleye fishermen were doing on the river not too far away. Another evening with no sightings, we were still had not found a pattern. The crops, they were killing us. The open country with all its grass, it was killing us. The deer were dispersed more than I'd ever seen. That was killing us. So the next morning, we decided we were just going to roam. Be mobile, move around, and try to catch some deer leaving or entering a trap where we could spring it on them if we had to. We moved into one coulee and down towards the dam face when all of a sudden, out of the blue, a big buck come racing by us. We only had seconds to look at the buck and no time to shoot. But when Levi and I looked at each other after that encounter, we both knew that buck was a shooter. Our luck, it hadn't been so good, but we knew he had went in to the next series of draws. So what did we do? We went into hot pursuit. As we moved up to the lip of the first draw, we eased up and scanned below, hoping a buck would be better than, or better yet, just maybe we'd see some antler tips below. Yeah, our luck wasn't still working for us. <laughs> we saw nothing. So we moved to the next draw. Same thing, easing up, slowly, peeking in, not wanting to spook anything out. I didn't want a running shot. I wanted to pull off a sniper shot, if at all possible. But once again, nothing. Nobody was home. Well, I don't know. I tiptoed in there and peeked in every little brush pocket. I mm -hmm. I think if you look at that hill, don't you think that trail, he just kept going? I think he went right around the corner, kind of where the fence meets the trail. Yeah. And then went high, stayed high. Well, let's make a move. Okay, let's Grab get the packs, packs and, and head out. And we just figured that buck had moved off a lot further than we had thought. We'd run out of country. We were up against the neighbor's fence. 
kind of dejected. We'd finally found the buck we wanted, but we just couldn't find him again after that fleeting meeting. Levi and I were just kind of moping along, not even really discussing much, when out of the corner of my eye, ho oh, oh, ho, there's a deer right there. Literally, it came flying through the gate and was running right in front of us. Now this buck had not even seen us. We were as surprised as it was hopefully going to be. I looked at Levi and he said, shooter. I threw my backpack off, hit the ground prone, and was on that buck in less than a breath. That buck was hauling the mail. You want me to stop him? Yeah. Hey! Woo! He stops. 200. As I was squeezing that trigger, slowly but firmly, he hit him. He's getting down that yep. draw. You stay up here, and watch for the high, make sure he doesn't get out. I'm gonna try and cut him off. That interlock Hornady bullet had hammered him hard, and I'm shooting a 308 caliber. Perfect. In fact, ideal for these big white tail bucks but still it hadn't dropped him in his tracks. So there's always that question going in your mind as the deer disappears from view. You didn't see him come out there, did no, you? No, he didn't come out. He's gotta be right in that draw. I mean, that's- It's the only place he can be. 200 yards, he made, he made a 200 yard mm -hmm. dash, and I think he's dead in the bottom, but. Yeah, he didn't go over the top, so. Well, let's make a sneak down there. I left my pack way up on the hill, I'll get that later. I wanted to come in at him just a little bit different than where he disappeared because he was going to be watching his back trail. And I didn't want to surprise him that way. I wanted to surprise him with another decent shot. As I worked into an angling position and crept up, there he was. And guess what he was doing? Yep, he was watching his back trail. But this time, I had a solid rest. And one shot that hunt ended. Whew, I was relieved. I do not enjoy chasing wounded game. In fact, I pride myself on one-shot kills. But in this situation, when you are taking a shot at a long distance like that, it does take that bullet a fraction to get there. And a deer can do a lot of moving when that bullet's in that open air. Yeah, he's down. He's down. But we were both a little bit surprised. He was just a big, heavy, mature four by four. And for some reason in our minds, we thought he had five points per side. You know, I thought he was a five by five at first. He's just a big four. Good man. Uh, so you think this is that buck we saw this morning? I think so. He was he went over that hill so fast, but he's got that same basic frame and his tines are definitely tall enough to match up with that other buck we seen. I mean, we only saw him for a few seconds, but we both thought he was a five by five. Right, yeah. And, uh, and he's the same frame. Same time length. Oh, gosh, I just don't know. It didn't matter how many points this buck had. After the few hard days we just went through, I was more than happy to pull that big roly-poly buck out of the draw, regardless of the point count. Levi, he still had a lot of hunting to do that fall, but for me, my South Dakota adventure had just ended. Well, there's one thing I do know for sure. I always enjoy hunting with you because you got great country. We always find mature deer like this. We're not hunting just two and a half year olds. And uh, man, it's, it's just beautiful in this big basin. This year was a little tougher because of all the standing crops. But the only thing we got now is how are we going to get him out of here? We're down a hole. There's mud everywhere from all the rain and snow. You think we can get that Can-Am down here close enough to get him out? Yeah, I think we can get him out of here. We're shooting our way down kind of the way the deer came. And... Well, let's go get the Bumblebee Express and give her a try. We'll do her. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Mark. North American Hunter is brought to you by Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center. 99% Peak Candy Freeze. Radiator protection that's guaranteed. Peak. Run true. Burris Optics. Home of the Eliminator 3 Laser Scope. Thompson Center. America's Master Gunmaker. And by the 4-in-1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor.